something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. And tonight we'll be taking a look at this. Needed this, so we went ahead and picked one up. This is the Ansel Diagnostic Leak Detector. What is a diagnostic leak detector, you might ask yourself? Well, it's like an automotive version of a smoke machine. And surprisingly, for those of you who don't know anything about automotive repairs, this is actually a kind of important part of working on cars in the modern era. EVAP codes, gas cap codes, are very common problems on modern cars. The diagnostic leak detector, a smoke machine, is a way for you to smoke test. You stuff literally smoke into the vacuum system, into the exhaust system, into the gas tank, wherever you are having an air leak. You put this in here and you can now tra trace down where the leak is coming from. And I'm going to uh, show you how this thing actually operates on a car, but let's go ahead and unbox it. It is the model S1000 and right there. And uh, let's see if it says anything special here. Output pressure maximum of 17 PSI. That's kind of a lot, so we won't crank it all the way up. And it uses just a regular car battery. That's normal. And it draws 8 amps, which is uh, kind of surprising. I was surprised to hear that. But let's go ahead and open her up. And it looks like we got a couple boxes in here. Two boxes, all right. And let's open this one first. There she is. Wow, a lot more compact than the one I've been using at work. Nice to have something like this here at the house. So that's the unit. And uh, you got a power and probably a smoke button there. And I would imagine, yep. This is probably, yep, where I'm going to put my smoke fluid into it. And while I'm there, let me go ahead and say this runs off either mineral oil or just regular baby oil. So I picked up a bottle of baby oil. And this bottle will last probably the lifetime of this machine because it just doesn't burn a whole lot at once. It's just making a little bit of smoke. So I'll get a funnel to fill that up here in a minute, but let me go ahead and close that up for right now. Oops. We don't want that leaking. So it's got a little O-ring on there so it doesn't leak uh, out of there. All right. On the side here, this looks like our output port. You can see, poof, smoke. And then over here we have our power that's gonna go to our 12 volts. Very compact, and here is a, uh, a, a sight glass to see how much oil is currently in it. Minimax, right there. <laughs> That's so compact compared to the stuff that I've been using. I use a Blue Point one at work, at my day job, or I should say, at my other shop, and um, and it's a whole lot. You know, it's probably 10 years old, but it's a whole lot bigger than this. So here's our power. Here's our vacuum line, our smoke line. Looks like we have some adapters here. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a whole lot nicer than I thought that was going to look like. So it did say it came with some attachments. This right here is to stuff into a gas cap, a gas tank, and then look, you can actually inflate it so that it seals. You wanna have a good seal. If I wanna see if there's any uh, leak at the, uh, you know, at a gas tank, well, what good is it if all the gas starts leaking past where we have it? So I've seen cones, and this does come with a cone as well, but uh, that's a really, that's really cool. Cool. All right, then we got some adapters here. I'm not sure what that goes to. And then we've got, again, this is another uh, funnel. This would go into our gas cap as well if you had one that did that other setup didn't fit. And then we have our attachment, so you, you basically stick this into it, and you can generate smoke that way. And isn't this awesome? They even gave us a tiny funnel to fill this thing. And then this, if I'm not mistaken, goes right there to hang this thing in a safe location. So isn't, boy, that's just a nice setup we got there. And it does come with a manual. Go ahead and take a quick look at that. And not a lot to it. I mean, honestly, this thing just makes smoke. <laughs> I don't know that there's a whole lot that, you know, with two buttons and uh, everything is fairly self-explanatory, but just min-max and stuff there. So I'm sure I'll read through that as far as, you know, pressure and all the rest. But there we go. There we go. So let me uh, give me pause the camera a bit. I'm going to fill this thing up with oil. I'll hook it up to a uh, car jump box and we will produce some smoke. And then 
we'll go outside and try to find a leak. Because what, what good is a machine like this unless you know how to actually use it to find vacuum leaks and leaks of that nature. Well, all right, here we go. This is it. I've got it plugged into a jump box here, just for demonstration purposes. Put a little bit of baby oil in it. And this Johnson Johnson Pink is approved uh, baby oil. It's pretty much just mineral oil with a little bit of a you know, fresh smell to it. So it, it's kind of funny when you turn this thing on, it smells pretty good. When we plug it in, we see the red light comes on. When we turn this green light on, we start to produce smoke. And there we go. In a few seconds here, you ought to be able to see it coming out. Give it a second to start cooking. There it is. I don't know, it might be hard for y'all to see. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's it. The longer this thing heats up, the, the more smoke it's going to create. And in fact, it's just like a, you know, for Halloween, it's perfect, right? <laughs> But that's it. So that's all there is to it. What I'm going to do is take it out to a car. And I'm going to show you uh, how we would go about diagnosing a simple vacuum leak. And we'll create a simple vacuum leak and I'll show you how easy it is to figure out where it came from. Let's do it. All right, just for demonstrational purposes, this really, well, actually, yeah, actually you would be able to do this on a real car if you wanted to, but it's not, it's not something you might go out of your way to do. But let's say I wanted to find a leak in uh, in a in an engine system if i had a, a cap missing or something like that and i was just not able to detect where that leak was you could use this for an oil type leak so i'll go ahead and turn it on it's going to fill the crankcase up and eventually it ought to come out the top let's see what happens so we can wait till it starts producing oil or producing smoke i should say and there it is you can see Right. Now I'm going to pop that down in there and we'll see how long it takes for it to uh, to go ahead and come out the top here. I'll zoom in on that and we'll watch and see. So, oh, there it is. I don't know. Can you see it? Smoke. Just a little wisp there and there, but there it is. Let me see if that shows up on camera. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me zoom back out. And now I'll show you how to use it to find a vacuum leak. Okay, this car doesn't have a vacuum leak, but what I've done is unplugged a hose. I'm not sure. This is a turbo uh, control boost valve. And I've unhooked another line here. This is actually the EVAP line. So I don't think these two are going to be connected, but you'll get the general idea. If I'm looking for a leak, if I can open up a vacuum line somewhere in the system, right, and then I can blow smoke through it, that should backfeed and eventually show where the leak is coming from. You're just going to look. And sometimes... This leak is small. A lot of times, you know, when you're looking at a hose that has a problem, it's just small nick. So it may be really hard to find. And a lot of times when I'm using a smoke machine, I just hook it up and I let it run for a while and I come back. And if I see a large cloud in a certain area, then I go to that area, I shut it back off, I blow that area out, turn it back on and I know where to focus. But let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see. This should actually go all the way back to the uh, gas tank, if I'm correct. It's been a while since I've done a diag on one of these old girls. <laughs> So if we don't see a leak here, I'll go back and unscrew the gas cap and, and we should see it there. Well, look at this. <laughs> I, uh, I missed it. There actually is a vacuum leak on this old girl. Can you see that? Is that easy enough for you to determine? So here's a leak that I didn't know existed. This clamp is on here perfectly. In fact, there's two zip ties on here, but there's a small leak right there. So right here, live on camera, I just diagnosed the problem with this car. Is that easy enough to figure out? I mean, think about it. How, how long would you have to let a car run? How many times would that customer have to come back with, an e, uh, with a code that's like a lean code that you couldn't figure out because you had unmetered air getting sucked through a very tiny hole like this? So this is working beautifully. It's working as designed. That's exactly what these things are supposed to do. So that's really cool. Go ahead and plug that back in and I'll put that on my list of things to fix up later on tonight. All right, so um, I just wanted to play with this tonight, so <laughs> I think this is pretty cool. I've been wanting one of these for the house because the work that I do here without having a smoke machine, if I'm going to carry that thing home at night, uh, it's kind of a pain. So this is so awesome to have this. This, by the way, did not come with the many thousands of dollars blue point that I have. So uh, that's a uh, little something to know. But 
On this one, I'm going to take it. This is a bladder. This is going to push down on my gas nozzle as I insert it. And once it's down in there, you know, fairly good, well, then I'm just going to inflate it. And by doing so, I've created a decent seal. Maybe not a perfect one, but I don't want to inflate it too much. I don't want to hurt this thing. So always, uh, you know, okay to start off small and get bigger there. But let's go ahead and hook this up. And let's turn this thing back on. And what it's doing right now is it is pumping the gas tank and all the lines, the vacuum lines and the evap lines, the charcoal canister, the purge valve, the, uh, you know, all that stuff, the, the uh, leak detection pump, all that stuff is going to be checked because if you've got these codes and you don't want to just replace parts, a lot of times it's a vacuum leak somewhere in this. The, uh, the early P1 body style of Volvo had major issues with vacuum leaks. This version, not as bad. Usually you got issues with the valve. Sometimes you got issues with a split hose up underneath the intake manifold that can cause some oddball codes. But as you can see, no smoke is appearing over here. Now, if I had this car up in the air on a rack, I would check underneath looking at it with a light. But for right now, I'm going to go up there and take a look on the front while this continues to pump. All right, so there's no leak. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and unplugged the line that comes from the charcoal canister up to the purge valve. And I'll show you that coming back from here, well, we can find our leak. Might catch a wisp of smoke right there. There's our purge valve line that I've unplugged and you can see, hopefully you can see, there you go. It's coming all the way through all those lines and that's where my leak would be detected. So if this had a tiny little crack in it, I'd be setting evap codes, maybe purge valve codes, maybe leak detection pump codes. But in reality, I need a two cent piece of vacuum line. Pretty awesome, huh? Let's go back to the shop and wrap this up. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited and, and uh, techs don't get too excited too often. This is a professional level tool at like an entry level tech price and I couldn't be more happy. It's always a risk when you buy something that's kind of new on the market, doesn't have a lot of reviews on it. I'm making one of the first reviews on this product and I'm telling you and you just saw, not only did I demonstrate it, but I actually found a new vacuum leak on one of the cars that I drive here. So it works. I just proved it works and it works really well. Um, there is one thing I do want to point out before saying goodbye on this and that is that I was using this jump box to power this unit up. You don't need to, you can use the power coming off of your car. I just did it because it's easier for me to go around from car to car and I just use a jump box. It's just my own personal habit, but it's not necessary. The leads are plenty long to go ahead and hook it to a car battery and run it wherever you need to. Between the lead length and the vacuum line length, you're good to go. The fact that it came with this little doodad right here, I really like that and that was so cool to be able to just put that in there and it's, it's a, it's a one-size-fits-all for, for uh, gas nozzles. But then they also were kind enough to in include the older style, cone style. These I've always found don't seal very well. And so you end up having a little leak around there when you're trying to gas it up. It doesn't pressurize as well as it should. You saw in the video, this thing here was perfect. It, I mean, it just made a perfect seal. It fit around all the cracks and crevices and was really good for it. I'm going to leave it at that. I can't say um, that uh, I found anything that bothered me about the unit. I will say I did overfill it at first, and you might have heard the gurgling sound. That is not a problem with the machine. That's a problem with me putting too much fluid in there at first. I didn't have my glasses on. I'm getting old, and uh, I got my glasses after that mistake. <laughs> but uh, that is what it is. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms Restorations and Repairs, and of course, just regular old-fashioned Farpoint Farms. This video is going to be going up on the regular Farpoint Farms channel, and a more in-depth version will be going up on the Restoration and Repair channel, because there are a lot of guys and gals out there who are techs in the field who don't know how to use something like this. So I'll probably make a more in-depth demonstration of this device there, and I'd love for you to check that out as well. And if you haven't already subscribed to that channel, man, you probably ought to, right? Because if you like automotive stuff, that's where it's all going to be from here on out. Anyway, until next time, my friends, take care.